Hey guys, welcome back to the basics of Betaflight. We've come a long way so far, haven't we? Hopefully, you've been successful getting the flight controller to connect to your computer. Hopefully, you've got drivers installed. And hopefully, you're able to flash firmware for the first time. Now that we've accomplished all that, the only thing left is to get into the configurator and start setting up your board. We're going to start with the setup tab and work our way from top to bottom. And we're going to get into everything that's important within those pages. Well, I think that's enough yakking. Let's get into it. As usual, we're going to start by connecting our board as we normally would, like we've done quite a few times in the past. No surprises here. But I'm, I want to show you something on this. So, well, if you didn't know, you guys will be aware now. If you look at your flight controller, and hopefully you can see that with this camera, there's an arrow on it, and right now that arrow is pointing up. That is to indicate the front side of the flight controller. So when you do actually install your flight controller in your quad, make sure that arrow points forward. Um, you can change the orientation of the board, but that's not something we're getting into in this series. Uh, just keep in mind that the arrow is the forward-facing orientation on your flight controller. All right, now I'm plugging this thing in. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on my connect button. And as long as we've been successful so far, the flight controller is gonna connect up. And this is what you should see here. A few things might be a little bit different because I have enabled expert mode. Uh, we'll get into that. But for right now, you should be seeing something that looks very similar to what I have here. Today, we're gonna stay on the setup tab and as we move forward, we're going to start going through each and every one of these, and I'm going to show you what the options are on those pages. But anyway, this is the reason we're here. Setup tab. We're going to get started with the basic stuff and just work our way through. Our item right here on top is calibrate your accelerometer. Your quad is going to use the accelerometer if you're flying in an assisted flight mode, like horizon or angle. Also, the accelerometer comes into play with arming angles, for example. Say you crash upside down, well, you may not necessarily want to be able to arm your quad. So if you have the accelerometer enabled, and if the quad's upside down, it won't allow you to arm it. Well, if the accelerometer is off by a little bit, it can cause problems. And by simply clicking on this button here, you want to make sure your quad is on as level of a surface as possible. You just simply click calibrate, uh, and then it's going to fix its orientation here. Uh, pretty straightforward with that. Oh, magnometer, 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 magnetor, <laughs> the magnet meter. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah, most flight controllers aren't going to have this, so really nothing to worry about. Underneath reset settings, this is going to set your flight controller back to beta flight defaults. This isn't something that I typically use. I would probably recommend reflashing the board. Uh, and kind of the same thing with the backup and restore here. Uh, these are a couple of things that I don't really use in this location. If I was going to do a backup, I would do some type of dump in the CLI, whether it's a differential or a, a full dump. Um, and I'll just give my configuration and use that information to set the quad back up. Um, you know, same thing with the restore. I've never used these. And one more reason that you probably don't want to use this backup is it does not back up all of your CLI command line settings. So if there's something that you've configured in the GUI, it might work okay. But if you've changed anything in the command line, this just isn't going to have it. So let's do the easy thing and just avoid this and learn how to do a proper dump uh, in the command line. We've been over that a few times, but if you have a question, just hit me up, no big deal. So that's these few things. As we move down, you can see that we have a representation of the aircraft. And well, with the accelerometer calibrated, this should actually match the orientation of your aircraft. Um, so hopefully you can see in my other camera here, but as I pick this up, and I tilt the flight controller to the left or the right or lean it forward, you're going to see how that responds within the configurator. And that's how you know things like your accelerometer is working, for example. That's exactly what this screen is for. And you'll see that it even has a little bit of data up here to show you 
kind of what the accelerometer is doing, I guess you could say. Um, but whatever, we got lots of numbers here and accelerometer is working, so that's pretty awesome. Um, you can reset your access if something is wrong here. Um, you know, these are two things to calibrate the accelerometer and reset the access that you're probably rarely going to do. Um, you might recalibrate the accelerometer if you've had a real bad crash, but honestly, every time you plug in the flight controller, it's going to kind of calibrate the accelerometer anyway and like re-level the flight controller. So I don't really know how frequently you're going to be doing this, um, but whatever, if you want to calibrate click away. There's no harm in it. Uh, just a few more things on this particular page to go over. Uh, as we move to the right hand side, you'll see there is a link here for the Betaflight wiki. Uh, if I click on that, it's going to open up uh, information on Betaflight. I'm not going to click on that. Do it on your own time if you're curious. It is just going to take you to the Betaflight GitHub. Nothing fancy. Um, but we have a little bit more information uh, as we move down here. You'll see we actually have, ooh, an info header. Uh, but here it's going to show you arming disable flags, and it's going to give you a value for that. If you're having a problem with the quad arming, it's going to show you why here. Uh, but keep in mind, if you're plugged in a USB, that's going to be one of your flags. And you can't arm if you're plugged in a USB now. That's kind of smart from the Betaflight guys, but a lot of people don't realize it yet. I've had a lot of questions, can't arm, can't arm, can't arm, and it's just because the quad's connected to the computer. So remember that, and if you're curious, without having to go into your CLI, you can actually get your flags right here. So right now I have 3 and 17, and if we were to look these up, I can tell you that one of them is because I'm connected to USB. Uh, anyway, if you have VBAT connected to your board, you should see voltage. If your flight controller has the capability of detecting amperage drawn, this is going to show you how many milliamps you have drawn and how much current you're currently pulling. Underneath that, if you're using RSSI, which is something very, very handy to have, uh, especially if you're not using a long range system like Crossfire, you, you want to use this. Uh, even on the old FR Sky protocol, works okay, but it's not 100% rock solid, and it's a good idea to keep an eye on these numbers, especially if you're flying in a sketchy situation. Um, so RSSI, right now it's just showing 15% because I don't have it set up. I think we're going to get into that as the series continues because that's something that's kind of important. But anyway, for now, it's here. You know where it is. Underneath this, we have a little bit of info regarding GPS. I personally don't use GPS in a mini quad, and I don't think a lot of you are going to either. So for the most part, we're just going to ignore this. Um, well, unless of course you are using GPS. And if you are, you probably know more about it than I do, so, well, <laughs> maybe I'll have a question or two for you. But anyway, let's get out of that. Uh, and then last here, um, on the very bottom, we have our instruments. And I'm just going to pick up my flight controller here and start moving it around. And, well, look at that. Our instruments are responding just as if it was a real full-size, really, really big airplane. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. I don't know why they give you this visual representation when you have such... Well, when you kind of have the same thing right in the middle of the screen represented as the quad. But whatever. It's there. Well, that's about it for the setup tab. As you can see, there really isn't a heck of a lot going on there. Uh, maybe a few places that you might find information that could be useful. But other than that, there really isn't much for us to do there. As the series continues, I'm going to go through the rest of those tabs. And then I think afterwards, maybe we'll get into some specialized things like setting up RSSI. I think that's a good idea. And recording this video actually made me think of that. It's now time for me to wrap this up though. I got a dozen batteries with my name on it just waiting to be burned, so I gotta get out there and fly a few packs today. If you haven't done so already, maybe check me out on Instagram, at Derek and his drone. I try to do updates there as frequently as I can. You might get those a little bit quicker than the YouTube videos. 
So that'd be a cool place to get some behind the scenes stuff and maybe check out the best sponsor in the world, hotdogfpv.com, where you can get all kinds of awesome FPV related swag, not to mention the world's best goggle strap. But that's it. That's all I got for today. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah.